Let's continue with our CRUD operations and this time tackle the edit category functionality. I made a couple of changes behind the scenes related to some JavaScript and HTML. As you can see, if I click on the edit button here, it opens a new model where we can edit the category. The save button currently doesn't do anything at the moment. If we inspect the element here and switch to the console, it simply logs the ID of the category that was clicked. So if I open the category 4 here and click on that, we have the ID 4. So let's go through these updates quick and then figure out how we can make this work and make Ajax calls. So if we go to the code here, you will notice that I have created edit category model twig template which is just a simple bootstrap 5 model html and it's almost identical to the new category model that we have within the index template then we include this within the index.twig template and we open it whenever the edit button is clicked the opening part is actually handled within the javascript within categories.js file Within this click event listener that we've created for the edit buttons, we're calling this function called open edit category model that I've created behind the scenes. We're passing in the model object and the data that we want that uh, model to contain. So in this case, we're passing in the category ID and the name is blank. And this is something that we need to fetch from the controller to get the name of the category so that we can pass that information here. Now to create this model, uh, object we're using the model from the bootstrap library and we're passing in the element by id which is the edit category model id and then this function simply finds the input with the name name on that model element and then it sets the value to whatever the uh, value we pass here then it also sets the data id attribute on the save category button so that when we click on this button which we have the event listener right here we get that category id from that data attribute and we log that category id using the console log so what we need to do is that we need to make two ajax calls here one to fetch the category info so that we can pass to this uh, open category model as i mentioned before we need to pass the name correctly and then the second call to actually save the category information within here note that there are multiple ways of doing this especially on the javascript side and multiple libraries exist that make it easier I'll be honest, my JavaScript skills are a bit rusty, so don't quote me on JavaScript related stuff. There are probably better and easier ways to do things. I just want to keep the JS code uh, to a minimum and also don't want to use too many dependencies like jQuery, AlpineJS, and so on. JavaScript, as you might know, is not a requirement for this course, so that's why I'm trying to keep it to a minimum to sort of show you the examples. Now, you can use as much JavaScript as you want or as little that is up to you if you want you can do all of this with just php and full page reloads and not use asynchronous javascript calls at all all right so let's start first we need to create an endpoint on the backend side so let's open the web routes file and we'll duplicate this delete endpoint and instead of delete this will be get and uh, we can keep this the way it is because we need to get the information or fetch the information for a specific category the method we can call it fetch or get or maybe get info or something like that i'm just going to call it get for now so let's inspect here let's duplicate the delete method on the controller replace this with get and of course instead of calling delete we need to call some method that will retrieve the information about the category by its id so maybe something like find by id or maybe get by id and pass the category id in here let's assign this to a variable like this and let's create the get by id method within the category service class this is going to return a category entity and it will accept id as an argument so we can do return this entity manager and simply call find pass the category class in here and the id as the second argument now let's go back to the controller and here we need to check if the category was actually found because there may be no categories by that id right maybe it was deleted or something so we need to do something like if no category is found then maybe return response with status 404 
then let's create a data variable here where we'll store the information of the category that we need to return to front end. Now let's write this data as JSON to the body of the response. So we can do something like response, get body, write and call JSON and code and pass the data. Then uh, we no longer need to redirect the user because this is now an asynchronous JavaScript call. So we'll simply return response. Also, my ID is underlining this uh, not category check here. Let's see what it wants. So it says condition is always false because category is evaluated at this point. Uh, that's probably because I forgot to add this nullable because this needs to be nullable since this may return null if the category is not found by ID. Now, if I go back to the controller, we see that that underlining is gone. All right, so we have not connected the front end to this back end endpoint yet. But since it's a get request, we can actually open it in the browser and see what we get. So let's open the browser here and simply do category slash and I don't know what's the ID of this. I think this was four. Yeah, so let's do four. And as you can see, we're getting a JSON response back. Now, modern browsers are smart enough to figure out the content type, but it's always good to specify what the type of the resource is that we're sending. We can set that header right here. So we can do something like response with header and set content type to application slash JSON. Now, because response object is an immutable object, this with header actually returns a new response. So this is not going to work just like this. We need to actually assign this to a response variable like that so that we overwrite the response variable with a new response object that contains the header of uh, content type with application JSON. Now let's go back to the browser, refresh the page. And as you can see, it still works. And as you might have noticed, the formatting or the display of the text changed a little bit. All right, so let's now try to connect this uh, backend URL with the front end. I'm going to be using Fetch API, which allows us to make Ajax requests. You can read more about the Fetch API in the documentation if you want to, or you may also use a library like Axios, for example. So let's open the categories JS here. And what we'll do is that we'll call fetch and we'll make a request to slash category slash the category ID and we'll chain the then function call on this. And as you might know, the fetch function returns a promise, which lets us handle the response asynchronously. A promise, if you don't know, basically is an object that represents the result of the async operation, whether it was successful request or a failed one. We can use the then and catch methods to handle the response from the fetch request and can use a then method multiple times. It basically lets us specify what should happen next. So in this example, we can call then first parse the response to JSON because by default, the response object contains the raw response body and then calling JSON here basically will parse it to JavaScript object. And then we can chain another then call to do something else with the formatted response. So we can basically do something like response equals response JSON. And then we can call then again. And the response that gets passed into this second then is the return value of the previous then call. So it's already formatted JSON. So we can uh, maybe do console log response so that we can see if it actually works. Let's comment this out for now. Let's open the browser, refresh the page. Let's click edit and it still opens the edit category model. I think that's because I did not run npm run dev here. So just make sure to run npm run dev or npm run watch. Let's refresh the page now. Let's inspect the element, switch to network tab, click edit. And as you can see, a request was made and the response is 200 status code and there is the JSON response. If we click on the cat4, we see that the response contains the correct category name. So now what we can do is that we can uncomment this part and actually move it right here. And uh, we can technically do it this way to sort of save a line and get rid of this to do and replace this with the response because response contains both the ID and the name. Now let's go back to the browser, refresh the page, 
click on edit on cat 3 and as you can see the category name is filled in let's click edit on cat 4 that works cat 5 that works as well all right so let's go back to the controller and i want to make a small refactoring here i want to have a reusable way of generating a json response so a response formatter of some sort ideally we could do something like return response uh, with json and pass the data as an argument here and this would take care of it for us but that requires some more changes that i don't want to make right now to avoid the uh, confusion and overcomplication of this app so we'll keep things simple and just create some sort of response formatter or presenter class with a method to format the response as json so let's maybe have some sort of private read only response formatter injected in here which will have as json method that we can call in here so instead of doing all of this we can take this code out and we can do something like this response formatter as json and pass the response object to it as well as the data variable let's create this class now within the app namespace let's also create the as json method let's paste in the code that we copied and let's return the response now we'll change the data type of the data to be mixed because it may not always be an array. We may use this as JSON somewhere else in a different context. Let's also add the return type to be a response interface here. And now since this method can be reused in other contexts, as I mentioned, I want to be safe and specify the flags to sort of escape or convert certain special characters. JSON encode accepts flags as second argument where we can pass bit mask of flags. The list of available flags are in the documentation, but the flags that we'll pass in are gonna be JSON hex tag, JSON hex amp, which is for ampersand, JSON hex quote, JSON hex apostrophe, and we'll also do JSON throw on error. If we open the documentation for these constants, we see that these hex flags basically convert some special characters like less than and greater than tags, ampersand, single and double quotes to unicodes. The last flag JSON throw on error is there to basically throw an exception on error. Now what I'll do is that I'll actually make this configurable so that uh, we can pass different set of flags if we need to. So maybe we can accept some flags as an argument here like this and we can set this to be the default value. All right, so I think we're good here. Let's test this out to make sure that our Ludo refactor didn't break anything and still works. Let's open the browser, refresh the page, click edit, that still works, click edit here, still works, click edit there, and that still works as well. Next step is to implement the post request using the fetch API to actually update the category data, in this case, category name. We're going to do that in the next lesson. So thank you so much for watching. Smash the like button if you like my videos and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. I'll see you in the next one.